And what, it, what I think is happening is, I really believe with all my heart, you guys, that like the kids that you see around here, like especially on our side of the campground, like there's something about this year, there aren't as many people at Cornerstone as there were in previous years. But you know what's funny? It's like all the underground stages, they're full. You know why? It's because I think God's preserving something that's really awesome in who we are and how we're wired to do serious work for the kingdom. I really believe that. So I have to do two things this morning. I want to continue to encourage you guys. How many of you guys were actually there yesterday when I talked yesterday? A few of you guys? Good. All right. So we had, I'm going to keep continuing to kind of hit on two things. All right. We are, we are supposed to, our prayer life is supposed to look like the prayer life of Jesus. And what that means is, at any given moment, you are allowed and you are like encouraged to ascend into heavenly places, connect with the Father, and see things from His perspective. You don't have to live a life of prayer that is begging for a God that treats you like a slave to maybe do something. Does that make sense? Is this on? Are we talking? Can we talk? Can we talk? Okay, so I had a dude that came up and talked to me yesterday. And uh, he shared some pretty real stuff on his heart. This is what tends to happen. When God starts moving in a big way, I think God is going to, for real, do spirit-filled, hardcore. Not Christian music, all right? What I'm talking about is you guys getting absolutely wrecked and destroyed on the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's not a doctrine and it's not theology, all right? It's actually becoming a Christian, okay? Does this make sense? Am I communicating? So he's preserving spirit-filled hardcore. And what ends up happening is when you really meet the Holy Spirit for real and you see his power and his presence in your life, the tendency is to get so ministry-minded that you A, forget about God or B, forget about people. So because I think God is actually doing something with us, the part of me that's even remotely like a shepherd or a pastor at all, let me just throw this down. Is that okay? Can I throw out some stuff to you guys? If we lose the grace to forgive one another when we screw up, we lose everything. Let's not forget, let's not forget the fact that every single one of us is in love with a Jesus that saved us from something. What I've noticed is that Christians still sin all the time. Did you know that? Have you ever been a Christian and been shocked that you sinned? You ever been that guy? You like walk into your own weakness and it almost like takes you by surprise. Like, oh, I shouldn't do that. I thought I was better than that. No, you're not. It's cool. Don't worry about it. Here's what I want. Here's what I want to see, you guys. I want all of us to be able to go to heaven anytime we want. Connect with Jesus, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, hang out with the poor, and have no pride. You need the whole, I don't know, it's like, there's like nothing. It's like, I want you guys to not get anything. <laughs> Just chill with I talked with a dude yesterday that's a part of the church. She's talking with the dude. Guess what this dude does? Sins sexually. Guess what he can't talk about? How he sins sexually. You want to know why? Because he's doing ministry. Do you understand? This is what it says in the Bible. It says that perfect love casts out all fear. I want you guys, we were, I was talking about this with a brother in the Lord. We're talking about what it would be like if we're moshing and like, yeah, doing stuff. And as our shadow passes a dude with cancer in the tent, they get healed. Wouldn't that be awesome? I, I think it'd be sweet. You know what else would be really cool? I'm going to throw this down for my friend Eric Gregson, who is the bomb diggity. I think let's contend for none of us to die. You know what would be cool about that would be to be like the dude that walked with God and then just was no more. Amen. And like death and cancer and old age and sickness tries to get you, but you're like, no, 
You know why? Because there's no death in heaven, and that's where I live. Amen. That's my kingdom. Do you guys do you guys know the kingdom concepts? I, I want to like take you from zero to sixty, like as quick as I can. In cancer, like that's that's death. That's he okay. In heaven, sin, sickness, death, pain, depression, crying, mourning. It does not exist. Does this make sense? Yeah. So Jesus prays a prayer and says, Father, the Holy One, on whom the whole family is named, you're the one. Holy is your name. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. What is his will on earth as it is in heaven? That's not a sweet like Catholic prayer. It really is a sweet Catholic prayer, but it's that's not that's a that's an order. Does this make sense? Yeah. So when you stand in front of someone with sickness or cancer or death in their body, and you say, Father, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, would that person have cancer? No. Would that person have depression? No. Would that person have sickness? No. Okay, you know how you can be convinced of that? Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Does it make sense? Because yes. there's, there's mad theologies that all come here and we're like glad with one another because you'll buy my shirt, but you wouldn't preach what I preach. There's all these warring ideas that show up to these festivals. So enough with the ideas. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Period. End point. Okay? So, oh God, help me please, please, please. Okay. I want you guys to encounter the Holy Spirit. How many of you? It doesn't matter. All of you, as a part of the underground move that God is doing presently in the earth, have a right to the Holy Spirit filling you to overflowing. None of what I'm saying will make any sense if you don't know the Holy Spirit. And I don't mean like you're mature in it. I mean if you've never been really like formally introduced. Because it's not allowed at your church. Because people that speak in tongues are crazy. Because people that prophesy are all liars. Because the Holy Spirit actually takes money out of people's wallets and transforms it into a Benz for the pastor. Like, whatever people's problem is with the Holy Spirit, get rid of it. It doesn't belong anymore. Does that make sense? I don't care about anybody's theology. I don't care. I, I don't care. Because all of us love Jesus, right? Like, all of us, in the, like, we, we, I love him. Okay, I love, how many of you guys remember yesterday? He's so hot, I want to make out with him. So bad, so bad. Okay, 